Welcome back to an academy. This is Deepak Krishnan VM, ME Structural Engineering AMIA, a verified educator. So previously we have seen the compression test of concrete. So today we are going to test the tensile strength of the concrete by split tensile strength test. Okay, this is also known as the split tension uh, test. So before that, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the academy and also follow us on the platforms like Facebook app and the website. So let's see. Hello everyone, good to see you, hope you're having a good time. So previously we have seen the compression test of the concrete. So um, as we all know, concrete is a very much good conductor in the compressive loading while it's not so, uh, not up to the mark during the tensile loading. Okay, so it is very important to know the tensile strength of the concrete. So let's uh, measure that or let's see how the, we can measure the tensile strength of the concrete by using the split tensile strength test or the split tensile test. Okay, so as usual before going to the test, we'll have some basic points to know more about the test. Okay, so first and foremost, let's see what tensile strength of the concrete is. So tensile, it, it's not a definition, it's just a small explanation. Okay, it's, an, it's, it's a very simple word explanation. So it can be said that it is the ability of the concrete to survive under tension load okay which means that uh, we cannot say it as a resist because concrete is a very weak uh, uh, concrete is very weak in tension so we can say that uh, is the ability of the concrete or the extent of extent to which the concrete can survive the tensile load okay with uh, uh, also so which is known as the tensile strength all right in a very simple definition uh, explanation actually not definition so as we all know any laboratorical experiment or any uh, scientific exp experiment should be based on some guidelines uh, provided by a recognized institution. So today we are going. So in this experiment, those guidelines are provided by the Indian Standards 516-1956. Okay, and also the tensile strength is expressed as a minimum tensile stress are uh, needed to split a material apart. And based on this experiment, which means that the how much. Uh, is the minimum stress that is required to split up the material okay or how much extent to which that material can or, or how much load up to which that material can uh, resist that splitting okay or rupture all right so according to uh, indian standard code the cylindrical specimens are recommended for tensile strength okay for the compressive strength it was uh, the cubical um, specimens whereas uh, for the tensile strength these are the cylindrical specimens okay now without wasting further time, let's move on to the experiment. First and foremost, let's see what are the apparatus and the equipments required for this experiment. Okay, the first and foremost thing we need is a compression testing machine or CTM. So if there is no CTM, a UTM will do the work. That means a, a universal testing machine will do the work for this. Okay, but if you have a compression testing machine, it will be more easier to do the experiment, to perform the experiment. Okay, the next one, what we need is a cylindrical molds. Okay, so to, uh, to, to, uh, to create or to make the cylinders, we need molds for that. So cylindrical molds are required. Okay, so these dimensions are, uh, which has the dimensions of uh, 100 mm diameter and also a 300 mm height. Okay, next what we need is a damping rod. Okay, if, if your laboratory has the um, luxury of vibrators, then it's perfect. Otherwise, you can use the damping rod, which has a length of uh, 60 centimeter and has a the uh, tip diameter of 16 mm all right next uh, we need a measuring cylinder scoop and trowel and also electronic weighing balance and also two plywood strips okay which is used to keep the uh, specimen perfectly inside that uh, loading area of the ctm okay so these have these are 30 centimeter long and 15 mm wide so i hope you understand what are the uh, apparatus and equipments that are required for us for this experiment now let's move on to the actual procedure but before that Let's see uh, the CTM first. Let's have a small look at the CTM. So this is the compression testing machine. These are two types. First one has the loading area and the control unit as a separate one. Okay. So here this is a control unit. This is the loading area. These are the two plates. Uh, this is the top. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, one more time, please. Okay. Okay. So this is the top handle. Okay. Which is used to pull down this uh, uh, top plate. This is the reading. This is the meter which you take the readings. These are the on and off switches over here. These are handles that I use to apply the load. Okay. Whereas in this this ten, uh, CTM machine, everything is jam packed into a single unit. Okay. This is quite compact. It's very easy to use also. So we have all the dials over here with different units. Uh, this is the handle for bringing down the two plates. 
uh, this is the handle for providing the loading conditions and uh, these are the this is the loading area and we have the specimen over here so this is the two types generally found ctm machines okay so now let's move on to the procedure itself now let's see how the experiment is done actually now before that uh, first we need the concrete mix okay so first and foremost uh, you take a particular mix that is uh, 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 that is uh, recommended by your laboratory uh, in charge or in according to your experimental question okay whether it is m15 m20 whatever it is and proportion the ingredients in and measure the ingredients in according to the proportions okay now after that there is a particular method for mixing okay if you follow this we can easily understand there is any problem in the mix and also we'll get a very good homogeneous and a really thick mix okay i mean i mean a proper mix can be obtained by following this mixing steps all right so how it is first and foremost mix the cement and fine aggregate on a watertight platform that is mix both the cement and fine aggregate in a dry condition and also mix it until it become a single unit that means a homogeneous mixture of a single color okay most probably a grayish color after that add the coarse aggregate into it now the coarse aggregate is added it is mixed it again until the entire coarse aggregate is uniformly distributed to the entire mix okay after that you add the desired amount of water or the designed amount of water to it mix it thoroughly until we get a homogeneous and a mix of uh, required consistency okay so that how is it done first cement and uh, fine aggregate mix it thoroughly uh, uh, in, uh, introduce the coarse aggregate to it mix it thoroughly until we get a proper distribution after that add water prop mix it properly until we get a homogeneous and a mixture of a uh, proper consistency okay so that how it has to be mixed now let's move on to the sampling of the cylinder okay so first and foremost uh, take the cylinder molds okay clean it nicely okay clean it nicely and uh, check that uh, nuts and bolts of the cylinder whether it's it is uh, really fitting and um, it means it, there should not, should not be any voids okay between the uh, jun junctures of the cylinder okay so first check the cylinder with all those nuts and bolts after that if you're satisfied with it clean it thoroughly okay clean it thoroughly with and then dry it by wipe, wiping by using a uh, uh, cloth or anything and then apply mold oil or any kind of oil into it okay that's it clean the mold thoroughly and oil it after that you have the mixture of concrete right there okay now fill the cylinder layer by layer okay so each layer having 5 cm almost approximately 5 cm thickness okay and also compact each layer by using either a vibrator or the tamping rod if you're using the tamping rod provide 35 tampings each for each layer okay that means we put a layer 35 tampings which has to, the tampings has to be distributed uniformly okay the compaction has to be distributed uniformly now next layer again compact uh, nicely again by providing minimum of 35 tampings so while uh, providing compaction keep in mind that the rod has to go uh, into the matrix okay and also the compaction should be provided uniformly distributed in the entire matrix of that specimen okay now after this when the entire cylinder is filled and the concrete is completely filled up clean the top side the side and everything okay level the top side of the cylinder by using the trowel and provide a small finishing to it okay now we have the molded concrete ready okay now the concrete and the mold is ready all right uh, after that now we let's uh, move on for the curing phase but before that before uh, going for the curing phase you have all the molds okay kept in the um, i mean all the concrete are placed in the required number of molds after that now uh, these specimens are stored in these molds for 24 hours okay this is to make sure that the concrete is set okay and we have that dimensional uh, we have we got the dimension of the concrete required okay so keep it for 24 hours now after 24 hours remove the mold okay carefully remove the mold and mark the specimen in according to the dates of uh, uh, testing or the number of uh, days according to which we are going to perform the testing like 7 days 14 days 28 days 56 days whatever it is okay now after this okay after marking you just submerge these uh, specimens into the water okay and make sure that the water is in of uh, temperature 27 plus or minus 2 degrees also 
every seven days we need to check the water okay check that there is any growth in the water coming out or any kind of other impurities coming from the water or any other external disturbance that happened to the water okay so every seven weeks you have to check that water okay so that's how the curing period is it's a very simple procedure now after curing now we, we need to go test the concrete all right now remove the now after uh, prior to half an hour prior to the testing remove the uh, specimen from the water okay wipe it nicely and allow it to dry to the room temperature okay again measure the dimensions of that specimens one more time okay now you draw the lines along the diameter of the two ends of the specimen this is make sure that specimen is kept properly in the uh, what can we say in the ctm okay now the specimens are ready for us now it, uh, by the time it uh, dries we need to clean the ctm or the utm okay now clean thoroughly the uh, loading area of the CTM and the UTM. All right, and make sure that it's working condition with the help of a lab assistant. If 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 he is there. Okay, now place a uh, one wooden piece on the loading plane. Okay, in the bottom loading plane, and place the specimen above it. After that, you place the second uh, plywood plane and pull down that uh, top plate to that. Uh, pull down the top plate and keep it as in touch with the top wooden piece okay we are, i think you're confused now let's so let's see with the picture so here's the picture for it so here we have a two piece right here i hope you can see that because the photograph is not so clear and this is how it keep the specimen inside the loading plane so it has to be aligned centrally okay and also uh, there is a line over here but it's, uh, the photograph is not clear of that okay centrally like this and also on the other side also so we have to keep the specimen in perfect alignment okay and also there is a wooden piece over in this bottom side also in the top side and pull down this okay the bring down this top plate and keep in touch with the specimen okay now the specimen is locked and also both the plates are touching with specimen okay now after this apply the load gradually at the rate of 14 to 21 kilogram per centimeter square per minute okay now once the now apply the load gradually and see at which point the split happens or the specimen fails okay now down that load okay so that's how we perform this uh, this test now let's move on to the formula it's a very simple formula the compressive strength is equal to 2p divided by pi dl okay p is the load that we get okay that that load at which that specimen fails okay now d is the diameter of the specimen l is the length of the specimen okay this is just a rough diameter and uh, length we have to once again uh, that uh, the, di the dimension should be based on upon which that uh, we measured one more time right when we take the uh, specimen out of the curing tank so that dimension should be applied over here okay this is just generic i'll put this value only for the just to know the purpose to, okay to, just to understand all right so that's it so the result will be in newton per mm square all right so that's all for today i hope you understand today's lesson thank you for being such a good audience uh, please comment your suggestions please review my presentation please recommend and share the slides this is my link to the profile to the academy platform paste in your browser so you can see the works that i've done over there and thank you once again i wish you a great day until next time ciao